Oh, you know what means business when it says recording. Here we go. <laughs> and <action. laughs> I love it. All right. We'll give everyone a few minutes to filter in. Hello. Hello. Thanks everybody for joining today. So excited to be chatting with everybody. I think we'll just wait for a few more seconds here. All right. Maybe we'll get it started with the boring stuff, the housewarming things. Um, okay. So welcome everybody. You know, thank you so much for coming. We are so, so excited today. Um, I'm going to do some housekeeping things and then I'm going to introduce our amazing guest. Um, so first is community is really big. As you all know, take a moment, say hello in the chat. Let us know who you are, where you're coming in from drop in social handles. That way we can make sure we can follow you, make new connections. Um, and you can do the same with other attendees. Um, in the Zoom chat, don't forget um, to make sure that when you are chatting, um, that you look at your settings, um, just making sure that everybody can see your questions and comments. Um, and just, we'd love to get to know you. So, and speaking of, Katie from Rock Paper Coin, she is behind the scenes. She will be here um, monitoring the chat so that Ashley and I can just have our amazing conversation. Um, we're going to post our social media as well as Ashley with the Abundance Group's info. So go ahead and give everybody a follow. And now, for those of you who are new um, and may not know, my name is Elizabeth. I'm one of the co-founders at Rock Paper Coin. Rock Paper Coin, we are a female-founded uh, CRM, officially now a CRM, as we just launched our last feature. So woo -woo. mainly we focus on leads, proposals, contracts, and invoicing, keeping it really modern, simple, clean, easy to use, affordable, and really just here to support your business. So with that, let's go. Um, I have the absolute honor of introducing Ashley from the Abundance Group. So Ashley is an amazing educator, community leader. Um, if you haven't seen her anywhere, where have you been? Because she is everywhere as she should be. She, You likely know her as the founder of the Abundance Group. Um, she does coaching. She has a mastermind community. She is dedicated to empowering and uplifting wedding professionals. We are all so lucky to know and have her in this industry. She has over 15 years of experience, so she knows a thing or two. Um, and she's operating you all in seven markets, like insane. Can't wait to dive into that. She has a planning business running 30 planners and she's generating almost 6 million in sales. So she's a boss babe. I think that's what we would call you. Um, and she's growing. <laughs> love it. I love yeah. it. Hey, you know, I'm excited to be here. This is a blast and uh, I know we're going to dive into it, but my obsession with rock, paper, coin and you and Nora and Katie, the whole group, like is so real and you guys have literally saved me thousands of dollars and I cannot wait to talk more about it um but you were like let's do something together I was like whatever you say I'm in let's go <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay now this webinar is unfiltered and it's not all rainbows and sunshine so I'm really glad we got to start off with that but we're here to talk about some tough stuff today so I want to dive right in because I want to kind of start with like what we do as business owners when something goes wrong as a review. We have likely all gotten a bad review, or if you haven't and you're new here, it's a little bit of a rite of passage is getting a negative review for one client, maybe two. And it just can be kind of like heartbreaking and soul crushing um, because we work so hard in this industry. So when those do happen, it's a bummer. So Ashley, I want to turn it over to you um, and just see, can you share maybe an experience and, you know, getting a negative review? How'd you handle Elizabeth, it? I can't share one, not one at all. I've never gotten a bad review in my whole <laughs> career. That is a whole No, of course. Life. Me too. Me too whole face life. Um, absolutely. Uh, and I think it's the thing I can actually remember my very first one star review. I remember where I was sitting. I remember what platform it was on. Like I, it's the, it's the thing that you're so worried about happening and then it happens and you have panic for, you know, four hours. And then you realize the whole world keeps turning and yeah. nothing actually happens. <laughs> like, yes, it is absolutely devastating. I think, especially the first one you get. Um, and I, so we do a volume of weddings. Like we do three to 400 weddings a year it's we're bound to have that happen just law of numbers right so i think also embracing that if you're doing it you're right you're scaling you're building yeah 
you're gonna have people that you interact with that like aren't a hundred percent fan club and like that's okay um the other thing I'll say a lot on on this side of bad reviews is I think one you know if you have all five star reviews people don't really dig into them they're like okay I see on google you know 25 star reviews cool if they see like a 4.8 what do I do? I'm curious. I want to go read that one star review or two star review. And what totally. do I have to do to get there is I have to read all the, like the five star reviews. Yeah. So now I'm looking at all these amazing things your clients are saying a lot of the times to write with one star reviews. Um, I don't know. I, I am, I would have to be very disappointed in a service provider to write a one star review. Like I would have to have food poisoning from the restaurant and then someone slapped me as I left. Like, I don't like, you know, I think if there's a, you know, a special kind of person that, especially for the business, small business owner community that writes one star reviews or, and I know we're going to cover it um, a little bit later today, but like holds one star reviews hostage, like, right. I'm going to write you a bad review. Um, mm -hmm. And man, karma, I think is a real thing. So <laughs> like, yeah. yes. That's the type of energy you put out in the world. It's what you get back. That is not my fight, my battle to participate in. I think for me, it's understanding that a one-star review, just like you said, I loved how you phrase it. It's like a rite of passage. You you couldn't have a one-star review if you didn't have a business, if you weren't doing the thing, if you weren't working hard. So seeing it and going, yeah, man, that's not, that sucks. And the world will still go on. So I, like I say, I think it shows like true, trueness of a business when you have different, um, like, Again, all five star reviews. I'm kind of like snooze fest. Great, everybody loves you. <laughs> <Yeah, like, what's laughs> that just me. I'm like, I don't know. I want to. I'm like, why are all their employees writing their reviews? <laughs> right, 100. So their mom and their grandma and their yeah, too funny. I yeah. Okay. Well, so for people who maybe have had them or maybe they're still still coming down the pipeline yeah. of an unhappy client, what's just like what's the first step? Like what should somebody do as the business owner? And is it important to respond? Like walk me through kind of your strategy when that does happen. Yeah. Well, and now, because I actually don't execute any weddings myself anymore. I haven't for about eight years. So when I get a one star review, it's about my humans, my team. That makes me even more mad. Like they're like, it's harder for me to get one star reviews, not from a business mindset perspective, but like then my humans have to read that these words about them. And I get real mama bear about it. So I will say it's different. Um, but I say the first thing that I do in that situation is I just breathe through it. Like it sounds so simple, but it's like emotions are truly like a wave. And we know that it's not going to be this intense forever. It's like, feel the feels of it, understand like how this, like, you know, when you're in it, right? Like you, if you try to just suppress it, it's not actually going to do you any good. So, so be in that, breathe through it, you know, give yourself a couple of hours, you know, just to sit, because if you respond in those moments, it won't look cute. Like it's not going to look great. You're going to say things you don't mean because you're responding out of emotion. So, um, take a beat, take a pause. Um, and then absolutely, I think uh, the biggest gift of a one-star review is also to respond to a one-star review. Um, and, you know, in my earlier career, uh, I was very like apologetic in my responses of like, I'm so sorry. And now I'm like, well, this, this, and this, and you're crazy. Okay. Like that is not how that happened. Um, obviously tactfully chat GPT yes. is your friend. <laughs> maybe put, Absolutely. maybe put your response into chat GPT before you hit, uh, you know, post, but, mm -hmm. um, but absolutely. I would just say, you know, that's your, that is your opportunity to show your integrity, who you are, your thoughtfulness, your brand, your voice. Um, because again, the first thing I'm going to do as a user of looking up at reviews, you know, or a restaurant or whatever, I'm going to look at the one-star review and I'm going to see like what did management say about that? Because the tone of management is actually what I care about, not what the review says. Because the yeah. we all know reviews, like there are people out there that are yes, judgmental and cruel. And I don't really care that their voice has any space in my head. So, um, and again, as a, as a patron of, of the restaurant or the service or whatever, 
um, I'm not going to give that their voice weight, but I do care about what the management says. So that's what I think, you know, give you, yourself a minute. We all go through it. You're not alone in that. Mm -hmm. Feel the feelings about it. Don't post in the heat of the moment, but do post, um, you know, a day later or whatever that, you know, enough for you to cool off. Yeah. And I think if you need to write a drafted response of what you would like to say mm -hmm. to help work through some of those emotions, and then you put it in email and you delete it and you don't say those things. Mm -hmm. But if you need to get it off your chest, if you need to write your whole story, you know, do that. But exactly to your point, your response is not actually for the one-star review writer. It's for your potential clients reading the review. Yeah. So you need yeah. to write it in a way that actually is like kind of still selling your business of, you know, these are all the things that we did do right. Or, you know, in this situation, this is how our team handled it. And you do, you don't have to be apologetic. And, you know, what is your kind of take on reaching out to the client and trying to ask them to have a phone call or, you know, to get it, them to alter the review. Like, do you do that? Do you even engage at that point? Or is it just like, let's yeah, just like the it. writing on the wall? I think it depends. It's a, like a case by case basis. If you, if there is like a uh, complete misunderstanding of something that happened and I think you can feel this out. I think you can go, this is one of those clients that I'm not going to win the battle. And then put down your sword and, you know, that I think is not worth your time. But there may be something where there was like just a, a true miscommunication or misunderstanding where there may be room to have that conversation. Um, I, like I say, I don't, I, I don't like the idea of having a one star review feel like it has that much power in general. So if you have one, like don't make any different decisions based on the one star review. Mm -hmm. again, everyone's going to get them. I think it shows like that you are a true operating business with humans that you have to interact with. Mm -hmm. Um, and so don't ever change. I think what you would, if you felt like there was, um, again, a miscommunication with a client, even if they don't give you a one-star review, I would still reach out. But if it is that you're, you're, you're reaching out simply to try to have them take down the review, I don't think it's worth it. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. it rarely changes anything. Yeah. Or they go post it somewhere else because now you've really ticked them off and they remember you and they're like, oh yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm stopping being mad at the current thing I'm mad at. I forgot I can be mad at you again. And it's like, oh, yeah, never mind. Don't wake the, don't poke the bear or whatever. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. It's so true. So let's kind of, we talked about like the negative reviews how important is it to encourage clients to leave reviews? Like what's your take on soliciting reviews? Because that does open it up for, you know, good, medium, and maybe not so great. So how do you ask people for reviews? What's your take on that? Yeah, I a thousand percent ask for reviews. And what I'll do is like, if I know a client, and again, very rarely something happened that there's, there's a rub or there's tension, like, probably not going to ask them for a review, but part of our like process, our offboarding of client process is asking for it and asking for it multiple times and making it super easy for them to leave a review. I was just thinking, I just got my lashes done like on, you know, earlier this morning and I've been going to this gal for years and I love her. She's so amazing. And I thought I'd never written a review for her. Um, I don't even know where to write a review for her. And so it's like, I, I, you have customers out there that want to write reviews and they don't even know where to go. So I think when people are like, oh, they didn't write me a review. I was like, well, they probably love you and just don't even know how. So I try to make it super simple. Um, if you want them to review in multiple places, I would like, typically we don't ask all of our clients to do that just because it's a little bit of a heavier lift for them. So we'll pick a platform that we're putting energy into Google, you know, if it's a storefront listing, whatever. Um, and then if they were like a, an amazing client that was, you know, super responsive and would, would, and we could just say like, Hey, can you copy and paste this review here? You know, yeah. take their review and you yeah. just post it on this link. So you can, they can copy and paste it like, and say, obviously, I just want to make this easy on you. If you want to change it or write something different, you can, but, um, making that as, the, as simple as possible for the mm -hmm. clients. I app social proof sells, and it's just so key to have those good reviews. What are the sites that you like to have people post reviews on? 
Yeah, I think it just depends on the modality of your marketing strategy. So like for Simply Elegant, uh, we use the knot. So that's one for us. Um, and then we use Google. Like those are our two go-tos. We don't use Wedding Wire. Uh, we will, Zola is kind of a player who's coming in the fold a little bit. So we'll spend a little bit of energy over there, but those are the main places that we do. But again, if like you're not, if you're not paying advertising dollars to these storefront listings, like then I don't think it's as valuable. I would hundred percent go towards Google. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think I just want to highlight something that you said is in the ask. So this is like an email that gets sent out after the event, after the wrap up, you're posting the direct links. It's not just, Hey, write me a review. It's like, mm -hmm here is where I want you to write the review and it can be three or four sentences and making it so easy for people to just click and go and leave like a very quick review and making it known doesn't need to be, you know, a 200 word essay. Like it truly just needs to say what we did great and why you loved working with us. Mm -hmm. Um, we yeah. also will give like a, a sample, you know, to be like, totally. if you're at a loss, like here's a sample. So all mm -hmm. of that just helps to make it actionable. Well, and think about the client experience on that side. Like when you're offboarding a client, like I don't think your stewarding of them is done, right? You you still can help them. And they like I said, they probably do want to write you a review. And if I had someone say like, hey, could you take two seconds? Actually, the photographer who did my brand photos did this two months ago. She was great. And she's like, it's right here. Click here. This is like, and I was like, absolutely. I have time to do that. And I loved her. Like, again, like I have another brand photographer who didn't ask me to do that. I loved her too. But I, I, I didn't write her a review just because right. I got busy and didn't think of it and it wasn't convenient. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I do. I, I think we, it's hard. It's hard to ask for people's opinion of us. Like there is something to say about that. And I think you have to think about it a little bit more transactionally of like, this will help get the word out about what we do and how we've served and how we've shown up. And I think that's really key. So, so it's more about being able to serve more people than it is about like that they're going to review my services or my team services. It's kind of like we have to strip that identity piece out of it. So when you get a bad review, I mean, and, and a good review too, but mainly when you get a bad review, it yeah. can feel like you're in this fishbowl. Like, is everybody seeing this review online? Like, you know, is everyone going to be talking about it? And it just can, you know, feel really like vulnerable. Do you have any tips for maybe even ways like you don't need to feel that way or controlling the story or protecting your brand? Like what are some of the strategies you you've used? Yeah. And, and we're all, we're all friends here. I can be some, I can be honest, right? I can, I can lovingly say, I don't know, for me, I'm not that important. Like other people are walking around in life, doing their thing, having their lived experiences, going through their things. Like nobody knows, nobody notices. <laughs> Nobody's like, you know, there's not some deep forum on Reddit. That's like, did you see? And everybody talks about it. Like, that's just, everyone's going about their day and their life. And I mean, like, what's the, when we think about it, I'm like, who's the last person I even saw a one star review of? Like, I don't even know. Like no one, like we, we feel it because it's our life and our mm -hmm. business and our hard work, but everyone else is doing their own thing and nobody cares. <laughs> like, nobody. And I hope yeah. that's freeing. I hope that's a freeing thing of like, nobody's sitting there worrying about it. So hopefully that gives you the relief that you shouldn't either. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that this is just making me think about is you have, you as a business owner can have unpleasant interactions that don't necessarily always lead to a bad review, but can sometimes feel like somebody's holding you hostage with mm -hmm. the potential of a bad review. And how do you, like, how do you handle this situation if a client kind of almost threatens you with leaving a bad review? Like, do you have a response? How do you handle that? Yeah, um, we kind of alluded to it of like, if there does feel like there's a miscommunication or a conversation that should be had, we should have that no matter if there's a review on the line or not. Because we, as a business owner of integrity, we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to show up well for the person that we're working with, right? So I absolutely think <laughs> it's a very sophisticated term, Elizabeth. Uh, and if you're in my community, you've heard me use it. Um, I call it the yucks. <laughs> 
if you feel the yucks, like that doesn't feel quite right. I don't really know. Um, feels off. And this is like in leadership. This is with preferred vendors. This is with clients, whoever it is. If you kind of feel the yucks, there feels like there's some tension there. Like go talk about it. And a lot of the time, sometimes you're like, oh, I was just having a really bad day. I'm so sorry. And then the air is cleared. Um, and sometimes they're they're like, hey, you know, when you said this, that really bothered me. And you were like, oh, I didn't. I'm so sorry. Like then you can have, it opens up the ability to have those conversations. And, and like I say, I think if there's ever... I am huge into building and developing relationships. Again, whether they're your team, vendors, clients, whatever. And I just don't want that bad energy out there, right? If I'm feeling the yucks with someone, I'm like, let's, let's, I don't even know why. I don't even know why. I can't even pinpoint what's happening here. Um, but I want it, I respect you enough that I want to engage in a conversation. And I do think that that's really important. Um, with that, if someone, you know, we did have a conversation, they were upset and they said, basically the one I hate the most is literally give me compensation or I'm going to go write you a one-star review. I'm kind of like posted here. Like we're not playing that game. Like we're not doing that. Like, there you go. Here's the platform in which you can put it on. Like, you're not going to manipulate me to behave differently based on what you want. And again, I will hold space to have integrity. And if I screwed up, I will absolutely own it. If my team screws up, we will absolutely own it. And because you overspent on your wedding day and we have a, a service-based you know, vendor category and you're coming after all of us that don't have a hard product because, you know, it's easier to prove. Like, I, no, I'm not, we're not, nope, we're not doing that. Like- that's not how 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 I'm teaching also my team to have confidence in our services and what we do. And if you can just simply say, give me $500 or I'm going to post this review, like, sure. And I honestly, I might even mention that in my response in the review of like, per your email, you know, basically saying you, I either need to pay you or you're going to write the review. Hey, at least you're honorable and wrote the review because I sure didn't pay you. <laughs> Uh, but truly, I mean, I'm getting a little yeah. bit on my soapbox about it, but I, I feel so strongly that small business owners are the hardest working folk that are in the country. And I get so frustrated when someone doesn't get what they want, then, then they take it out of the, the pockets of small businesses. And I just, I, I have feelings about it. Um, and like I say, I think it's really, you have to have that confidence and belief of your own business and your own integrity to stand true to it. And again, because yeah. you're responding to the review, you know, you're responding to the people that will see the re your response to the review, um, show up as yourself, show up in that confidence, show up in that integrity. I think the people who do ask for like compensation unfairly, you know, just because mm -hmm. they overspend, I mean, we all know those, yeah. those people that 100%. overspend and then they have the wedding blues and they try to like claw back some of those funds if they sniff weakness, mm -hmm. they're coming for blood. Like yeah. it, if they even sense that you're wavering on 500, that 500 is going to become a thousand. And just the more, you know, confident and steadfast you are about your services and the value that you brought and that you were worth every penny, like it just, mm -hmm. you know, makes it so they don't have more to come after. Well, and their integrity will win the, win the battle like their lack of integrity will win that battle if you don't hold in yours. And, and I think like you're saying about this idea of overspending and the wedding blues and like, here's the thing, like we all have hard seasons in life and someone just spent a whole gob of money. And like, you know, again, I, you can understand it. And hopefully what you've done built the relationship over the time that you were able to work with them, that they're not going to necessarily um, behave that way towards you. But yeah, yeah. People are sometimes erratic in their behavior or their choices. And I think you just have to go, okay, well, <laughs> it is what it is. So when you are trying to resolve, you know, an unhappy client post wedding, how long or how many meetings, how many emails will you send back and forth before you decide to just like cut bait? Like, I don't care anymore. I've tried. We're not getting anywhere. Like what, what's your tolerance? When you've lost sleep over it, when you're like, yeah, nope, I no longer, you know, and usually you know, there are clients and they approach us of like, Hey, these things didn't go quite the way they wanted. And then they're, they're participating in the conversation. You know what I mean? Versus someone just yelling at me or, you know, a mother of the bride just yelling. I'm like, 
okay and this is a like okay gretchen i'm gonna have to have you at least be in control to some, like i can't even help you here um and i think really um you know oftentimes so we actually have a client success coordinator on our staff and she does deal with um any of the unhappy clients and she'll go back and forth to maybe three times via email and one phone call. I would say anything more than that. And I think this is a wasted energy for the business owner. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So one of the best ways to protect yourself, you know, I think is having clear contracts and, Mm -hmm. you know, clear guidelines around the payments and around expectations and services being provided. But sometimes clients dispute payments. And so then it points back to that contract. Have you had any disputes? What have you learned from that process? Anything you would like to share on that side? Again, never Elizabeth ever have I had a client dispute. I were literally just talking about, I'm dealing with this right now. So we had a client, um, event management client, uh, about a $25, $3,000 client um, that, we didn't even hear anything. We actually do a check-in. Our team does a check-in at the six or 30 day mark for our event management. And we say, how's it going? Everything well. We don't hear from people a lot of that. They just kind of know it's just like us, like how's, how's it going? And, and if it gives them space, if it's not going the way they want to, to connect with us. So if we don't hear anything, we assume all is well. Um, and we do get some great feedback of like, love your team. Um, or, you know, we'll get just, Hey, this is, this feels a little off or these expectations aren't quite right or whatever. Um, so we set this to this client, heard nothing event day. Great. You know, uh, there was one blip from the venue side. Uh, it was a staffing issue, um, that we couldn't do anything about. In fact, I think we actually helped and brought more, uh, third assistant to come in just to help, uh, which was fine. We have a good relationship with the venue. You know, I'm happy to not be necessarily as profitable and pay all that third person. Um, and, and this client out of the blue disputes her credit card charge for the remaining balance. And we're like, I don't even know what client, what, what client is upset? We like, what is happening? And so, um, my team went to work this at this time. And this is where I got to love on rock, paper, coin a little bit. Um, we, we were using square and uh, DocuSign. So like a combination through Salesforce and uh, disputed it with the credit card company. Square basically said like, you have to provide this. If you wanna if you want to dispute the dispute, right? If you wanna uh, send all the paperwork, the contract, everything, um, any emails. And my team, my ops person went to work on this for probably four or five hours of calling her workbook, the contract, everything, like provided them any and everything, um, all the feedback from the vendors, like everything. And, um, then uh, sent it all in. And then I think she got an alert that we um, sent all the paperwork in. And then she disputed her deposit. So now we've like basically had both payments um, in dispute and we lost the first one, which to me was just completely ridiculous because everything I provided. And again, like I simply elegant has the means and the time to be able to provide all of this information. And there are a lot of business owners that don't have those resources that don't fight it, that can't fight it, that don't have the time or capacity to do it. And I did, and we still lost. And I, it, it is infuriating. And so then, um, right. So then she disputes the, uh, deposit. Um, and in the interim of this, it triggered an audit at Square about like how we take payments. And so they asked us a couple questions from this one credit card dispute. Now I do seven figures a year with this payment company, with this processor. So we had a what, $1,200, $1,500 dispute come out of a million dollars. And they said, okay, because of like the liability of um, services being rendered, because we do a 50% uh, deposit 15% remaining balance two weeks before the wedding. Um, clean, easy, simple. We do it for all different packages. Um, and they said basically the, uh, to mitigate risk on, on square side, because of all these disputes we're having, we're going to hold 20% of your accounts receivable for 90 days for three months. That was 
probably going to be close to a hundred to one hundred fifty thousand dollars because they were coming into our fall, which is our biggest. Most we sell and we get all of our mini mountains. I was like, "What in the world?" And so I literally called Nora. I'm like, "Oh my god, Nora, uh, I'm going to switch payment processors." And I, Elizabeth, I'm going to truly and if you know me, like I, I care about the brands that are great, and I'm not going to BS. Like Rock Paper Coin was like, we will migrate 180 contracts and 180 payments over to our system over the weekend. I called Nora, I think at like 5 p.m. on a Friday. And I was like, I would hate me if I was calling you. Please don't hate me. Like this is, I'm freaking out. And she's like, I got you. And your team went to work and we now process everything through Rock Paper Coin. And what I'll say is there's a couple things that I think are fantastic. One, that like you as humans, you, Katie, Nora, everybody are just world class, like just good people behind the scenes of the brand. The other thing I'll say is you are very strategic because one of the things that was happening at um, Simply Elegant was with Square, they were taking the processing fees and we didn't have a way um, easily to accept ACH payments. So all of those processing fees were coming out of my bottom line, which is about 3%, 3% in a million dollars. That ain't cheap. Okay. <laughs> like, right. And so I, uh, I was doing the math and rock paper coin will save simply elegant 25 to $30,000 in 2025. That is that. so cool. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, I think the third piece of why, uh, I am so vested and I'm so bought into what y'all are doing is just the the true service nature of what you're doing. The fact that over the weekend you migrated all of our, like, I was like, this is unreal. Um, yeah. So I am absolutely a brand, uh, evangelical brand lover. Um, but again, I think the thing is you built it for the right reasons for this group of wedding pros, like our family that goes through all this craziness in yeah. such a way that makes it simple and easy. My ops director says all the time, like, I love rock paper coin. It's so simple for me to navigate compared yeah. to when we were on Salesforce. Yeah. So I say all this because you want to work and have systems in place that protect your business and that get your business. Like the founders of it, they're dialed in. They understand the concerns. I know you guys are rolling out some new stuff with the dev team. Like I, I, I know some cool stuff is coming down, but truly I think, you have to understand that there are these liabilities that are out there that Square can you know, trigger this audit. And uh, I asked Nora about it and she's like, I, we fight it with you. Like we're yeah. we're on your team. And I was like, done. Like, where do I yeah. stand? <laughs> so yeah. Exactly. Like you said, you're, some people don't have the team bandwidth or size to respond to disputes and claw through all of the documents and the data. And that's like one of the thing on the dispute side, that's my role here is yeah. I will counter disputes on behalf of every business that receives one. So yeah. that to me is like so important. Now we don't have, we're not winning these at a hundred percent because sometimes, yeah. you know, there is fault. But what we do is we collect all the data and then we write a character reference about the business, how long they've been on the platform. The other thing is that we do IP tracking. So anytime somebody's paying or signing, we have their IP address. So we can tell, you know, in this case, Stripe is who typically is running the disputes. We tell them exactly the IP address, the location, the time, the date stamp, like all of that, just mm -hmm. to make it feel like more real. Like here is all yeah. of the data behind it versus just here's my word document contract, which is what a lot of times we're seeing. And I'm like, that is not, that's not going to fly. You're not going to win. That. We have to be more strategic about it. Well, and I think too, uh, and you're obviously like leaning on your expertise in this, but I also, I feel like it's a like literally like a coin flip of like, are we going to side with the business owner or the other person? Like you didn't even look at everything I provided to you. Um, so yeah. I do have the resources, the time, the money to spend. And it's like, and it still doesn't matter if you don't have a processor that's on your side. And that, like I say, among other things is why I feel so strongly about what y'all are doing at Rock Paper Coin. Yeah. One of the things that in a more recent dispute we won is I actually sent in a screenshot of all their user sessions. So mm. I could show their IP address logging into our platform, how long they spent on each page of the contract. So I could say they, they read this, they signed it. This is what they paid. And I could say they've logged in 
37 times in the last, you know, six months. And I think for that one that we ended up winning, I was like, okay, this is a great thing. You know, I'm learning too, as each dispute is different, but this one was like saying that they had never seen anything. And I was like, no, 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 no. We keep all of that. I I got receipts y'all. I got literal receipts. And that's what I'm saying. Like when you have, like, that's also why I, again, I feel like with rock paper coin, it's like you have Elizabeth in your corner that not only, uh, like I say, is is a great human, but she this is like her expertise, her knowledge. And even at Simply Elegant, we did everything right or the way that we should have. And there's still these areas that you're even like, I'm going to send you this email when we hop off this training today. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to send that to my client, like, right? That you're going to know. And so having an expert like you, that's like, okay, I get this. This is how we can handle it. Here's an even like advanced strategy of how we take care of it. I don't even know. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's awesome. I mean, it tells us everything we need to know about how the banks view it when they refund the client immediately. And then we have to prove why we should keep that money. Like yeah. it tells you how the cards are stacked yeah. before you even have an opportunity to counter. 100%. So yeah. I think, yeah, that's tricky. Okay. We could clearly talk about disputes for yeah. a really long time. I want to be passionate about it. <laughs> some time yeah. for Q and A because we we got some before the call and we're getting some during the call too, yeah. which is so right. exciting. But um, one of the things I just want to kind of like wrap this up before Q and A is what are some of the red flags signs that you see in potential clients or you know during a planning process when you are planning or with your planners of ways that you can see them pop up and you can kind of squash it and Mm -hmm. not let them grow into bigger issues. Is there anything that you could share about what you look for, what you see? Yeah, this is a great question. So I would say on my, my sales team has the opportunity at any point to say no to business. So we do not have the mentality of like all clients are good clients because some clients are not good clients. Um, and we don't want, I don't want my team to be stressed out like that. I don't want them to dispute the card and then trigger an audit with square and they're going to keep a hundred thousand dollars. What? Like, no. So, so hear me say not all clients are good clients learn from, you know, our, our, you know, scars of all of this. Um, so I say, don't, you know, don't sign them from the get go. If you back to the, the sophisticated terminology of the yucks, like if, if you don't jive, like, I think there's something to say to trust your gut on that. Um, I will say I teach on something called the temperaments, which I love a lot. It doesn't mean that we only sign clients that are just like us when it comes to temperament type, but understanding and knowing how to communicate effectively with different temperament types is huge. So you may have like the reds is like the, the terminology we call them driven trailblazers. So it's like the, the boss type that's, you know, got everything like that might feel intimidating for someone to work with, but their communication style is simple. So as long as you're augmenting how you communicate and you're speaking their language to them, I think you can mitigate a lot of the challenges that we have with clients, especially for service-based providers. Um, that being said, there are just bad humans and there you're not going to be able to weed them all out. Um, I think again, being really mindful in that sales conversation of it's not, you're not selling yourself, you're learning about them. <laughs> are you actually a client I want to work with? Uh, that's one of the things weeding them out from the very beginning. If one slips through and they start to, you know, they get the, the, the 30 day out, you know, kind of, um, manic feelings and, you know, they, they, they don't necessarily, that, that happens. Like it's a big, amazing thing that's happening in their life. Like there's empathy there. Um, but it's just back to them setting expectations. If you can do that, open communication, direct communication, um, to try to help, you know, being a good listener and letting them also, cause you're, you're in a relationship with them, right? You're, okay. you're, you want to build that rapport. Um, so I think, you know, doing that can mitigate a lot, but I would say people that, um, that, you know, they're, they're super negative, they're super harsh. Um, sometimes, especially if they're, if you're a smaller business, you have the opportunities to do things like this at Simply Elegant, we can't necessarily do it, but I would like, I'm not uh, like opposed to investigating like their socials and like, how do they speak on socials and in their Google account to, oh, they only give one star reviews. Like I really want that person, uh, you know, especially for like planners that are doing $20,000 contracts. Like you probably have the time to do some research. Um, So I don't think, I don't think that's like a bad thing to do. I think you can um, kind of find some of those red flags. Um, But I think just being in the lookout and just seeing like, 
is this person someone I want to talk to for the next 12 to 18 months? Right. 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 <laughs> yeah. And I think res- I like how they respect you yep. and like your business, you know, I think a lot can come from that is you can be unhappy, but you still have to be respectful. And, yes. you know, we've had to say that, or this is not actually how we talk at our business, or this is not yeah. how we do business. And I think, you know, those are kind of some, the key thing is like, are they respecting you? Cause if not, then that's the bigger problem. A huge sign. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. We're going to get to Q and a last question. We love asking everybody this. If you could just give one piece of advice that you wish that more business owners would take to heart, what would it be? Yeah. A lot of the business owners I work with and if any of my tag families on in the chat, I think I've got a couple of them. Um, This is like the thing I tell people. And I think the number one thing in business, if you want to scale and build a business is scale equals people. So you have to learn to build great relationships to, to show up uh, well for other people, whether that's your clients, whether that's vendors, whether that's your, your team, all of those different uh, facets. I think it is so key. And I think a lot of the times, especially wedding pros get really stuck in the marketing space. Um, got to market on Instagram, got to do the new thing, got to jump around on TikTok, got to figure out a Pinterest strategy, got to, you know, many chat, all the things. And those are great. And at the end of the day, this business in particular is built around relationships. Literally, we are marrying people. <laughs> right? But it's also like, um, I actually was doing some research for a, a talk I did earlier last week on the last 50 years of how people found their vendors. And the number one across the board, every generation is word of mouth, is referral. Um, And it doesn't mean that they don't use technology to then, you know, see if the the internet thinks they're great too, right? But um, because I do think this generation getting married is more and more tech savvy, but it's about people. And I think uh, people don't need to be scary, even though we talked about the scary people a lot today on this. (laughs) We kind of, we kind of talked mostly about the scary people, but um, (laughs) But it, they're out there, yes. And I think um, who, you know, we've had the blessing of dealing with at Simply Elegant. I mean, 98, 99% of humans out there are great. And they want to um, have an amazing wedding or they want to help you from a vendor perspective. They're on your team too. And they want to want to work with you on it. So if you can, everybody hanging out, if you can really um, embrace that loving on others, being good to people, being kind, is the best way to grow a business, you will be okay. Um, that is, like I say, I think a lot of people think like business strategy, they hear they have a million dollar business and they think like I'm a hard driving and whatever. I'm like, no, no, I'm kind of just a person that cares about other people and, you know, right. Yeah. So uh, that's what I think. It doesn't, business doesn't have to be that way. It can really be something that you love that you can pour into that can help pour into others and build your community. I'm, I'm all about that. Scale equals people. Mm-hmm. Love it. Okay, great. Okay. We've got some questions to get through. Um, okay. Um, this one came in during our call. So how can clients do chargebacks just because they're not happy? I book destination wedding couples, and this is a major fear for me and my agents. Currently I use Stripe to process payments, but I've been looking at auto books that my bank offers to process payments. Tracy rock, paper, coin. Like (laughs) I'm not even, if, if this, if Elizabeth wasn't here, And I was on some other thing. In fact, I think I did this on a panel I was on two weeks ago, rock, paper, coins. Because again, not only is is it built for wedding professionals in the event industry, right? It's built for the creative community, but it's also, you have the team, like they're they're a part of your business. So Mm -hmm. I would say absolutely. um, If you're thinking about moving, please move. I I moved my my seven figure, like, like that's a big deal to move everything. Like that's a big lift. Um, and it was worth it for me. Uh, but what I will say about <laughs> that you don't understand chargebacks because the client's not happy. No. It is a very dumb thing that exists that someone can just say, I didn't like that and dispute it with. And honestly, banks are making it easier and easier, like yeah. click of a button. Um, I so, think there's going to be a lot of uproar about this and there's going to be talked about a lot more. And I think hopefully there's going to become more insulation from risk I for the so business too. owners, but we're not there yet. What happens like on kind of <clears throat> the structure side. So on mm-hmm. your credit card statement or on your bank, you can go in and you can say service, not received product, not received partially, you know, received. So a lot of the times what we're seeing is coming in where they're saying it was partially received, meaning like this service was only partially given, which, you know, obviously 
from the business standpoint, isn't true. They feel like they gave the whole thing. So they're disputing that charge. Then what happens is the bank goes into their due diligence. So your payment processor gets that information. I know. Their yeah. due diligence. <laughs> and you have to understand this is big money for banks. Disputes are big money. So they charge every business $25. Now at Rock Paper Coin, we eat that. So we pay that on behalf of our businesses. So anytime there's a $25 fee, we pay that and we go to bat for them because it's big business for Stripe. We then fight Stripe on behalf of our businesses. The idea is that you start to understand how disputes work. You can get better at then countering the disputes, but they make it very easy for clients to dispute because it means money for the banks. So understanding that as the fundamental is really important. And yes, there are really bad people who will dispute charges without you ever knowing but likely they will let you know that they are unhappy before they dispute. So then it's up to you as how far you want to go to try to resolve it. And sometimes it's just not worth your time. So let them dispute and let it get figured out. Mm -hmm. One of the things is that just because the banks ruled in the client's favor has nothing to do with what the court system will say. And that's really the misunderstanding, I think, for a lot of small businesses. You have a contract ideally that gets signed that has, you know, all of the fine print that's going to protect you as a business. So anything under typically like $5,000, just go to small claims court. You will likely win. You will like, I think almost a hundred percent of everyone who I've sent to small claims court with the materials that they've needed from us has won. Now, if it's more than that, then typically you have to get lawyers involved. So in your terms of your contract, you need to make sure that then the fees, the legal fees are on the client. If it goes into that, that point. But even before that, we have a demand letter that we share with everybody who needs it. So if you lose a dispute, but you have a signed contract, we'll send you a demand letter. It's written by our, our legal team. And it basically says, hey, you're in breach of contract. I'd like to not take you to court, but I'm going to if you don't pay me. We have everything get resolved after the demand letter is sent. So understand just because it's a dispute with the banks does not mean you're out of that money. Like you you can still reclaim that money. You just have to do it through other means. Mm -hmm. Y'all see this is what I'm talking about. You want Elizabeth on your team. <laughs> I have Elizabeth on my team. And I'm, I'm happy. so passionate about it. Yeah. Okay. I love it. It's so true though. <laughs> have well, more this is it, like, like Tracy said in the chat, like this is one of the biggest fears that business owners have and we are open to risk with it. And so it, that fear makes sense and protect yourself, you know, with your contracts and you, and your systems and the humans around you to, to, if you do run into the situation, you have options and you yeah. feel like you have some control. A hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I find myself feeling like all of my clients are upset with me all the time, even though they aren't tips for being prepared, but realistic and distinguishing the paranoia from the actual problems to be managed. Ooh. Yeah. I, I think I, I talked about it a little bit, um, earlier today, this might have just something to do with your temperament type. So this person might be a, what they call a blue or a, uh, we call them a thoughtful developer. Um, so it's just the, that you're more internalized. Your dialogue's more internalized. Perfectionism comes here. I would say, um, sometimes to people, um, like these are the detail oriented people that need to, um, really feel that they're connected and they're, you know, so I would say, uh, mostly that's that it can be your temperament type understanding it's your temperament type and really going okay <laughs> is this what I'm experiencing in the relationship is this what I'm hearing from them from their emails um yeah I so I think it's it's really like use the facts in that mm -hmm. moment and yeah. try not to rely so much on the emotional side of things but yeah I would, I, am I freezing for you I was like freezing for oh. me no, no, great. Okay, just me. I was like, I'm looking at myself and I'm like okay. this, and I'm like, I don't think that's a good thing. <laughs> but yeah, it's so I would just say like acknowledging and being like, okay, yeah. knowing it, knowing about yourself, knowing that of yourself, I think also can relieve some of that. I'm like, okay, that tends to be the baseline. And I want to make sure and connect with the client if you feel yeah. those. Thing too, remember that it's your client's first time planning a wedding typically. And so it could just be 
do you have, do you need to have more check-ins with a, with a client that is maybe a little bit more nervous or a little bit more, you know, micromanaging you? Like, are there systems that you can set up in your planning process that could tailor to a client that makes them feel more at ease? Because I think what, if I'm reading through, they're probably not upset with you, but they're probably just worried about the process. So how can you put them at ease? And then if people are communicating over email, it is so easy to miss interpret emotions over email. So if you feel like something's coming in with a harsher tone, just call them, just hop on the phone call, like Bye. pick up the call and, and just make sure to be like, Hey, I want to make sure I'm understanding this email correctly. Like, 100%. Yeah. Okay, the that relationship, right? Like that's the whole, that's the whole premise. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. This is coming in as anonymous. So I'll, I'll take this and then we'll do one more. Okay. One of our couples requested to fill out our feedback survey. If we had one after their wedding, we do have a survey that I sent over. The bride gave us some very constructive feedback. However, there are a few things that she listed that aren't correct. Should I try to explain them to her or is it best just to give her an overall thank you for filling out the survey and not specifically address anything? Great question. Hmm. I want to dig into this a little bit more probably. Um, like with my private clients, I'd be like, send me the feedback so I can see it. Cause I think it depends. It depends on if growth in business is, is personal to some extent. Like I want to grow the business in this direction. I want to up level this level of service. Like sometimes there are things that people care about that the business owner themselves isn't necessarily as worried about. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, like how does that play out in real life? Like, um, onboarding or offboarding like there the onboarding process was not as smooth as I would have liked great I'm not worried about that necessarily as a person like personally like if I'm onboarded and there's a little bit of a misstep I'm like hey if they're running around it's cool yeah. but there are some people that are like it matters to me it is such a show of the business is professional and da, da, da. and I'm like I think it, it then comes back to the business owner of how do you want to grow as a business owner, right? Like, is that a, is that a lane in which you do feel you should up level and do the work? Um, and again, you're just not, you're not going to make everybody happy. And I think in business, you have a lot of choices and a lot of opportunities yourself to, um, again, to grow in the, the, the directions and the ways that align with you. So I would say if the feedback feels like it's, maybe poking something that, Ooh, yeah, they're probably right. Yes. Let's dig into that and let's address it. Because if you want to grow, having that conversation with that person is probably a really fruitful one that you might be able to have. And if not, that I might leave it a little bit more, um, you know, whatever, open-ended or whatever. Yeah. Does that make sense? Also, it's kind yeah. of like a meta version answer to that. No, but, yeah. I, I agree. I would also add, I think, that if you want to reply and just thank them for the the thing and then just say, you know, there are a few things I'm happy to explain on our side as well. Mm -hmm. But if not, I completely understand, you know, and thank you so much. Like totally. you can put the ball back in their court. Um, I don't mm -hmm. think it's your job to go back and like nitpick, even though they might be wrong. Yeah. Um, probably unless like what Ashley was saying, if it hits home, then maybe right. you do like maybe there's maybe a that is. To be done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. I'm an experienced, passionate five-star planner facing my first negative review. Initially it was three stars, but when wedding pro informed them that I was disputing the review, they then downgraded it to a one star out of retaliation. Now I'm devastated. Any advice? Woo. Mm -hmm. This is kind of back to like, you know, I, I here's the thing I use the knot, uh, you know, I don't have any druthers like, but they're not in your corner all the time. And they're not working for you. They're working for eyeballs on their website and traffic. Like that's the thing that that's their commodity, right? So unfortunately you're put into positions where it is like you're building the reputation, you're building the reviews, but like you're building it on a platform of someone who maybe doesn't, you're not their priority. So acknowledging that it's kind of a bummer. Um, the retaliation thing. Um, yeah, that is exactly, we've had this happen to us, I think twice, um, where we went in and disputed a three, they got mad, put it down to a one. Um, so you're not alone in that. That happens for sure. Um, and again, I think back to all the advice we had at the, at the top of the hour about getting one star reviews, how to work through it, how to deal with it. 
Uh, live in the moment of being sad about it for a while. That's okay. Being mad about it for a while. That's okay. And know that the emotional fog will clear. You're going to be able to respond in the ways that you need to. Um, and unfortunately, uh, bummer for this person, but most likely I have not successfully overturned a review on the knot yet. Um, I, I think we have like five or six, uh, you dispute them and then the knot's kind of like, we don't care. We're going to put it back up. And I'm just going, great. Thanks. <laughs> like, um, glad we did this. <laughs> yeah. Glad we had this talk that did, went nowhere. Um, so just being honest that that might happen. Um, yeah. but yeah, again, you know, you're kind of, you're building on land. You don't own a little bit over there. Um, same on social, same on whatever. So, um, I think just being aware and knowing that knowledge is power about it. So, um, but again, like the, everybody, every, everybody who has been in business has worried about this period. So like, this is such a normal thing to feel. Um, and I'm really sorry that you're having to deal with it and it's not cool. And it makes me mad that my, like I say, all my wedding pro humans have to be scrutinized in a way that I think is really unfair sometimes, um, because of the nature of the event industry, weddings, like what it all means. Um, uh, and that we have like one shot, we have one shot to get it right. <laughs> and about 40 other people that are trying to like mess it up, <laughs> drunk guests and all this stuff, right? <laughs> it's like, we have a... Uh, a hard gig and you absolutely like, I'm sorry for that. And, um, you'll, it will soon be in the rear view. And like I say, honestly, I don't even know how many one star reviews I have because the problem that seems this big, I posted something on Instagram, Adam Grant wrote like the problem right now seems this big. And in a month, it'll seem this big. And in six months, it'll seem this big. And in a year, you're going to probably not remember it. So yeah. yeah. We'll always remember your first negative review. That's true. But... I doubt hundred percent. Just the first one. But after that <laughs> you're hundred percent right. Yeah. I remember like, like I say, remember. I remember where I was sitting. Um but yeah it's it it won't feel yeah. like now I look back and I'm like, oh yeah, that happened. Yeah. And yeah. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. I and like we said, don't respond. Take time work with chat GPT, you know, on a crafty response and maybe include in there that it was initially a three-star review, like, yeah. you know, do things that yeah. will feel good and then forget about it yeah. and, and move on and then focus on happy clients and then drown out that one-star review by asking all past clients for a review. So you can get to work right away to be more productive, worrying mm -hmm. and staying in a place of worry, not productive. So send those emails, get more reviews and start drowning that out. Yeah. I'm so glad you said that as I was thinking about like what we were going to talk about today. I was like, I want to make sure I remember that, um, that have some of those people in your back pocket, vendors, clients, that you can push those reviews down. Cause what does a couple do? Like, especially on the knot, I think it's like 15 reviews. Like they're going to do one scroll and then they're going to be done. <laughs> you know, um, I do think one of the things that is nice about the knot is like, it does like um, most relevant reviews. And a lot of those, when I have done the research seem to kick up some of the better reviews. Yeah. So I do like that about them. I don't, it's not that I hate the knot. We get a lot of business from the knot. I have no problem with them. I'm not a vendor that, you know, is like, you know, uh, with the knot, but um, there are some practices that I think don't really behoove the, the advertiser. Um, but like I say, so that is nice. And always remember that you have those in your back pocket so you can push those reviews, reviews down. That's a, I'm so glad you said that because I was like, I'm going to forget. So yeah, I think that's really good advice. All right. We're coming up to our time. Um, just a couple little housekeeping things. So Ashley, thank you so much for joining us um, and sharing all this wisdom and your experience. Um, you are a wealth of knowledge and I loved this chat today. Um, even though it was about negative reviews. What a cheaper um, topic. <laughs> Um, Ashley is somebody that you really just cannot have in your corner enough. She is just an absolute pleasure to do business with. If you need her services, um, reach out. And again, we'll share all of the social stuff in the chat. So just a big thank you, Ashley. It was so fun to chat with you today. And up next, so as a reminder, we're doing monthly webinars. And last year, we brought you the money series. And this year, we are bringing you Unfiltered. Um, next up in November, we are doing something a little different. We are going to be talking about kind of owning businesses with your spouse. So we're having a panel. And it's going to be the good, the bad, the ugly with four amazing spouse partners and all of the intricacies of owning a business together. So we'll be in touch. Um, otherwise, thank you all so much. And it was such a pleasure chatting with you, Ashley. Thank you again. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Bye y'all. Bye.